Hi, welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how we draw lives and score to the screen. So when we're drawing lives and score to the screen, we're going to be using, or I'm going to be using this blank area at the top of the screen. So I've left this blank uh, on purpose because that's where I'm going to put my text for those two items. So we're going to make this eventually a persistent um, piece of text. What that means is it will um, be created once at the start of the game and then it will um, stay recorded or these, that uh, those scores will stay stored right the way throughout the game, whichever level uh, we're, we're on. So that will become more clear as we work through this process. So the first thing that we need to do is to create a font that's going to be used to display our score and our lives. Because when we create a, a game, um, you'll notice that the fonts here, okay, I'm looking here, are blank. There's none there's in there. So first off, we need to create a font that we can use in-game to display stuff on the screen. So um, we're going to create in the fonts area a font. I'm going to call this FNT. FNT underscore, and I will call it game font. You can call your game font whatever you like. Um, it's just, don't forget, good practice to uh, to use the naming conventions. And the one for font happens to be FNT. So you can see a preview area here of the font. Um, this is where we can select our font. This um, allows us to display certain group items. Um, we've got, um, we can change it to bold, sent, uh, bold and underlined and italic here. We can change the the, um, the size of the font here, and we can change it, turn on and off anti-aliasing, which um, you can as you can see if I've turned it off, it um, it makes the font um, slightly fuzzy. So it's always good idea to keep that on unless you're um, you're doing it that for a reason uh, to, to go with the style of game. So um, I'm going to look at some fonts here. So I'm going to come down to um, let's have a look at. Some of the fonts, if I go to Vidana, um, we can change the font style to bold, for example. So it's giving you a preview here, and I can change the font size here. So I'm going to go with something like, uh, like that for now, just for now. Let's see how that looks. I might come back and change the font depending on how it looks in-game. So I'm going to keep um, my font as that. Okay. The next thing that we need to do is to create an object that's going to be used to um, to display our um, lives and score. Now, um, this is something called a game object. Um, it doesn't have any sprite associated with it because all it does it stores or it actually calculates things for us in game. So this um, this object will store um, scores. It will store lives. It stores. Uh, it looks at where we currently are in the game. Um, it checks to see if we've um, we've won the game or if we've rent our lives at Moses between different screens and so on. So it's a very so it's really the um, the backbone of the game, if you like. It's um, it, it it keeps track of everything that's going on in the game. So um, I'm going to create a new object for this, and it's exactly the same process as other objects you've created. I'm going to create an object. And this object I'm going to call obj underscore game. Okay. So you can see it's called gate the game object. There are no sprites associated with this object. So it's not going to be displayed in game, but it's going to be on the room. Okay. I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. And the first thing I want to do with this object is to create some variables that are going to be used. Um, throughout the game in different objects and because they're going to be used in different objects I need to make them global and what global means it means it can the, the variables can, can be used by any object in the game so I could use them in the monster object I could use them in the um, player object I could use them in the gem object if I saw if I, if I needed to okay so um, we're going to create a number of variables so I'm going to on, I'm going to create a create event so when this object is created, I want to declare a couple of variables. So um, on game start. 
Okay. So I want to create the following variables. I want to create lives. I want to create score. Okay. So because they're global, I need to declare, to, to declare them as global variables. And to do that, I use the word global in front of the variable. So the variable name. So I'm going to set global dot lives equal to how much do we have three lives at the start okay I'm going to set global dot score and I have that equal to zero because I want to start the score at zero I just want to go back to the uh, to the game screen a minute. So I, I don't want to do that actually. What I want to do is to display the room for level three. And don't forget the um, the aim of the game is to get this hat. Okay. So um, what I need to do in my um, game object as well is to declare a variable to check whether or not we've got the hat. So we did something similar to this with the key. So we had a variable called has key. Um, so we're going to create a global variable which is going to check if we've got the hat or not. So I'm going to set a global variable as has hat. If it's zero, it means we haven't got the hat. If it's one, it means we have got the hat. So um, let's close this uh, this level down. And I'm going to set another variable global dot has hat. Oh. Global dot has hat. And I'm going to set that equal to zero. So I'm going to check to see um, if the has hat variable is um, one or a zero. Um, and if it is a one, we're going to go to the win screen. If it's a zero, we're going to take the um, uh, we're going to keep on playing the game until that variable changes. Okay. The last thing I need to do on this create event for the time being is to um, tell the game the game object what font I'm going to use. So uh, we do that using a command called draw underscore set underscore font. So we're going to use draw underscore set underscore font. So this is going to tell the, the game what font we're going to use. We've only got one font in the game and we've called it FNT underscore game font. So it tells you, um, so I'm going to open the bracket and it tells you then here you need to name your font. So that is um, FNT underscore and there's my game font there, game font. Okay, so um, all, don't forget all of those lines need to be ended with semicolons. This uh, exclamation mark is here because um, we haven't um, used has hat variable anywhere else. Um, it's not a, um, a built-in variable, whereas lives and score are, so that's why you don't see the exclamation mark there. This is nothing to worry about yet because we haven't finished the code in, so that's absolutely fine at the moment, okay? So, um, so what we're going to do now is look at how we actually draw the um, the fonts to the screen. Okay, so um, I'm going to close this down because we've finished with this now. So I'm going to add an extra event, and this time I'm going to add a draw event, and I'm just going to use the draw object. It's not a GUI event; that's something different, which we're not going to cover in this um, tutorial. We're just using the draw event, and the draw event is going to be is used to draw objects to the screen. Okay, I'll draw things to the screen. We can draw sprites to the screen if you want to. We can and we can use text. So we can use the draw event. Okay. So the draw event is going to be used to display to the screen. Okay, so I might change this description um, a little bit later on when we've uh, added a few more bits and pieces. So how do I draw things to the screen? Well, what I want to do is to draw text, and we're going to look at this in a little bit more detail later, uh, because we can use some uh, some different effects and we can send a text and so on. We're not going to cover that in this video. We'll do that um, uh, in maybe the, not the not next one, maybe the one after. Um, but we're going to draw some text to the screen. So um, I'm going to take you through how to draw um, the score to the screen first. Um, don't forget, we've set our score to zero. So we use the command draw underscore text. So draw underscore text. And then I'm going to open a bracket. Okay, now at the bottom of the screen, you can see that it tells me what it's looking for. 
it's looking for an X position, it's looking for a Y position, and it's asking me for a string. So the X position is where we want to start the text drawing on the X axis, that is horizontally, okay? The Y is where do we want it to display from the top of the screen down. So the first number is how far in from the left do we want it? The second number, the Y, is how far down from the top we want to start drawing our text. And then the string is what do we want to display? So let's try this, okay? We're gonna go, um, uh, let's, let's say I want to draw it 50 across, 50 pixels across, because don't forget we're working on full HD resolution here. And then I want to draw it, say 50 down. And just for now, I'm going to put the um, word score. So you have to put this the string in speech marks, by the way, otherwise it won't um, recognize it as text. So I'm gonna put score, a colon, and I'm gonna leave a space. Okay, and I'm gonna close a bracket, and I'm gonna end the statement with a semicolon. So that's given the command draw text, I want to draw it 50 from the left, 50 from the top, and I want to display the word score. So, uh, in order to get this object in the game, I need to add it to the room. So we're just gonna just add this one game to this one um, object, the game object of the room. In a future video, we're gonna take it out of the room, okay? But uh, you don't know about that quite yet. So I'm gonna open up my level one, okay? and I want to just drag the object anywhere in the room. It won't be visible because there's no sprite associated with it. So I'm just gonna click object game and I'm just gonna put it just, just so I know where it is in the top left hand corner. You can see there's a little, um, if I zoom in, you'll be able to see there's a little um, question mark there. Okay, you can see it there, okay. Um, but you won't see that in game. So when I run the game, what's gonna, what should happen is we'll display the word score in uh, on my game okay so let's try that let's close this uh, level down and let's run okay so you can see the word score 50 across 50 down i might want to move it up slightly it doesn't look quite centered so i might want to put the uh, make the um the y-axis for maybe 45 let's try that let's make the y-axis 45 that's the second number 45 Okay, I'll run again. Okay, that's a bit better. Okay, so that's uh, that's moved it to 45. But I haven't got any score after it. Now we declared a variable called score, and we set that score value to um, zero, if you remember. So I need the, the zero after it. But I can't just use the variable name because it's a text string, okay? Because when you use draw text, you're drawing text and the number that you've saved in the variable called global.score is a number, we need to convert that number to a text value in order to display it. And we do that in the following way. After the, um, the speech mark, okay, we just put plus string, okay? And what the string uh, function does, it converts a number to um, text. So I need to tell tell it now what number do I want to convert to text? Well, I want to convert global dot score. Okay. So hopefully, what that should do now, that will display the word score, and then after it, it'll display the value of global dot score, but converting it from a number from the global dot score variable to a string. Okay. So let's run that and see what happens. There we go. So as our global dot score value. So if I change that um, that variable to a um, hundred, for example, and then run the game, it'll display my score now as one hundred. Okay. So that's how that works. So we can do exactly the same thing for the lives. Change that back to zero. We're going to create the draw event. Um, and don't forget, whenever possible, no problem with you copying and pasting um, text. This time I'm gonna use um, lives. So I'm gonna change this uh, score to lives. And obviously I want to change it to 
global.lives here. Okay. Um, now, this is where you have to start playing about with numbers. So let's let's try let's try a hundred here. So I'm going to be moving across a hundred pixels. I don't think that's going to be enough, but I just wanted to show you what will happen. Okay. So you can see now that lives is being drawn over the top of score. So it's not enough. It doesn't come across enough. And this is where you need the, an idea to use the rulers. Okay. So let's have a look at the rulers. So if I go on to my room for level one. So I could say, let's have a look at around about um, the 200 mark. Okay. That's the way to probably looks about where my, um, my, text is ending so maybe 250 let's try 250 okay so you can see the numbers have run across the top here so i'm going to try 250 and see if my um, my the start of um the the lives um is not now cut off so let's try that let's go back on here and let's try and change the x value here to 250 okay and then run the game so there we are. I might want to move it across a bit more. I think I will actually. I might make it uh, 300 perhaps. Let's try that, 300. There we go, that looks a bit better to me. So now we've got um, on the screen score and lives. Um, if I wanted that on the second room as well, then I would need to put that um, as it is at the moment, I would need to add the um, the game object to the other room. So just to demonstrate that, let's uh, let's play the game very quickly. Run to this level. Okay, so we've got the key. Okay, let's go up here. I don't want to make you jealous of my gaming skills, but there we go. Okay, so if I come across. And go to the next exit you can see that the the lives and the score don't appear on that screen okay so let's go on to room two and let's add the game object into this room let's try that again okay get the key as quick as i can Okay, and you can see that the lives and the score are now displayed in room two. Okay, there is an issue with this, which we'll look at in the next video, but um, but that's how you display text on the screen um, in uh, your rooms in Game Maker. So in the next video, we're going to look at um, using those score and lives uh, text values that we've got in those variables to keep a track of the number of um, lives that we have and the score that we, um, we have throughout the game. So I'll see you in the next lesson.